Mike McCallum is generally considered by many hardcore boxing fans to be one of the most underrated fighters of the 80s and 90s. With a fantastic resume that includes several boxing legends and world title wins in multiple weight divisions, he is certainly in retrospect one of the most highly regarded fighters of his era. Nordic Warrior here, hope you guys are all doing well. Today we're going to be looking at former light middleweight, middleweight and light heavyweight world champion Mike McCallum. So Mike McCallum turned professional in 1981 after a stellar amateur career. After a string of victories against lower level competition, mostly by knockout, he received his first world title shot, taking on Sean Mannion for the vacant WBA light middleweight title, winning by unanimous decision. For his first title defense, he went over to Italy and fought the veteran Luigi Mincillo, stopping him in the 13th round. He then took on David Braxton, stopping him in the 8th round after a dominant performance. He then took on the undefeated knockout artist Julian Jackson, after surviving a scare in the first round. McCallum won by a brutal second round KO. He then went over to Paris and had a couple of fights including a 9th round stoppage victory over Syed Skouma. After a homecoming fight in Jamaica which resulted in a first round knockout, he then defended his title against former welterweight champion Milton McCrory, winning by a 10th round stoppage after a great fight. He then took on another former welterweight champion, Donald Curry, knocking him out in the 5th round. His next fight he went back over to Italy, losing for the first time in his career by unanimous decision to Sombu Colombe, losing his world title. He then decided to move up in weight and after a few easy wins at a lower level he took on the popular Brit Harold the Bomber Graham for the vacant WBA middleweight title over in the UK. McCallum won by a split decision in a very close fight. His first title defence was against undefeated Irishman Steve Collins. McCallum gave Collins the most one-sided defeat of his career winning by a wide unanimous decision. He then went back over to the UK and took on Michael Watson knocking him out in the 11th round after a war. He then went over to Monaco and had a rematch with Sambo Colombe winning by a split decision, avenging his first defeat. Later that year, he took on the IBF middleweight champion James Tony in what was a razor close fight that could have gone either way. The fight was scored a draw. Many fans felt at the time of the fight that McCallum had done enough to win, but it was a very close fight and it was very hard to score either way. They had a rematch the following year with Tony winning by a controversial majority decision in another very close fight. It was a developing rivalry between two evenly matched and highly skilled fighters that was always going to result in a close and competitive fight. He then decided to move up in weight again and eventually got a shot at the WBC interim light heavyweight title against Randall Yonker. After defeating Yonker, he then took on the inactive true WBC champion Jeff Harding for the full title, winning by a very close unanimous decision. He had one successful title defense stopping Carl Jones and then lost his title by unanimous decision to Fabrice Tiozo. McCallum was knocked down and clearly beaten over 12 rounds. The following year, he once again got a shot at the WBC interim title and this time he took on undefeated future boxing legend Roy Jones Jr. Jones completely outboxed McCallum, winning by a wide unanimous decision. The following year, he moved up to cruiserweight and had his final fight with his rival James Tony for the vacant WBU cruiserweight title, losing by a close unanimous decision. So how good was Mike McCallum? How would he have done in today's era, or any era besides his own? Let's talk about it. So Mike McCallum, in my opinion, was a fantastic fighter. He was a fighter who may have been overlooked in his era due to the popularity of fighters such as the Four Kings. Interestingly enough, with Thomas Hearns being a stablemate of McCallum's and being far more popular than him at the time, he also never really had the hype or promotion that those guys had. But in my personal opinion, in terms of boxing skills and overall ability, he was better than all of them. With notable victories over unbeaten world-class fighters like Julian Jackson and Steve Collins, you have to admit that his resume looks fantastic. Those victories have aged very well when you take into consideration what those guys were able to achieve in the sport. He was also a true road warrior like many Jamaican fighters and he defeated several world-class fighters in their backyards. His style was very entertaining and he was relentless in the ring, breaking his opponents down with some of the most fluid combination punching you will ever see in a boxing ring, and he had underrated power. Not the same kind of one-punch power as the likes of Tommy Hearns or even Julian Jackson, but he had the accumulation type of power, 
stopping many of his opponents on their feet with combinations. If he were around today, I think he could dominate the current light middleweight division, and even give most of the top level middleweights and super middleweights problems. It's hard to say how he would handle some of the bigger, more powerful light heavyweights, but taking into consideration that at 40 years old, he went the distance with a prime Roy Jones, I think he would be durable enough to at least make it competitive at world level. Thanks for watching guys, I really enjoyed looking into the career of Mike McCallum. Let me know what you guys think, stay tuned for more retrospective boxing videos, thanks for watching and god bless.